I'd like to call the August 2, 2011 meeting of the Buncombe County Commissioners to order, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you'll join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for our invitation, invocation tonight. Invitation and invocation. We will have Commissioner Bailey. Uh, folks, today our uh, community is in mourning because uh, over the uh, the last uh, five days we've lost two outstanding public servants. Uh, as most everybody knows, on last Thursday, July the 28th, Captain Jeff Bowen, 37-year-old, died in the fire over at uh, 445 Biltmore Avenue. And what we know about Jeff is that he loved his family, he loved his work, he loved his church, which was Faith Baptist. Many of us attended his service uh, today, and one of the most moving that I've ever attended. And you can read a lot about these kind of things in the, in the local paper, but when you're there and you actually see uh, the, the, the wife and the children and the mother and all of that really comes home to you. Also, yesterday, John Mark Crow, a 45-year-old supervisor. Jerry, for, I think it is. Is it Jerry? Yep. Um, supervisor for MSD, died in a tragic accident down on uh, McDowell Street. And what we know about him is that he, too, uh, loved the work that he did. Uh, his wife, Susan, and his church, which was uh, Fruitland Baptist Church. And so instead of a formal prayer today, what I'd like for us to do um, is to honor these two men with uh, a moment of silence in their memory. If you will join me, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Bailey. In accordance with the Code of Ethics adopted by the Commission, it's the duty of every board member to avoid both the actual and apparent conflict of interest or appearance of conflict. Does any board member know of any actual or potential appearance of conflict? No, sir. Nope. Then we will proceed. Um, is there a motion to follow the agenda as published with the exception of the Inca High School rooftop lease for the solar initiative that will be brought up into new business? Uh, is there a motion to pass the agenda? So moved. Second. There's been a motion by Vice Chair Stanley, a second by Commissioner Peterson. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor of following the agenda as amended say aye. 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 All opposed, no. We will follow the agenda. Our first matter today is public hearing. We have Mr. Ed Green and Mr. Chad uh, Bandy who will be talking to us about the Department of Transportation Secondary Road Improvement Program for 2011-2012. Um, we will take public comment after the uh, presentation and we will uh, likely approve or disapprove the resolution afterwards. Uh, Mr. Green, thank you for being here. Thank you, Chairman Gant, members of the board. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be with you today. My name is Ed Green. I'm the Division Maintenance Engineer for Division 13 of the Highway Department, which is located here in Asheville. We thank you for allowing us the opportunity to, to appear before you today. Uh, I have some of our staff with us today. As you mentioned earlier, Chad Bandy, our County Engineer for Buncombe County, is here. He will present the program. We also have our Assistant District Engineer, Britt McCurry, one of our technicians from the district office, Robert Briggs, here with us. As you're aware, we hold these public hearings every year to be in conformance with General Statute 13644.8. Department of Transportation is presenting to the Buncombe County Board of Commissioners the proposed expenditure of the estimated 
secondary road construction funds for the period of July the 1st, 2011 through June 30th, 2012. And you will note in your packets that these funds have continued to be reduced every year. So we're still gonna construct the roads that we can down the program as far as they'll, the funds will allow us. At this time, I'll let Chad come up and present the program. We will then answer any questions from the commissioners or the public, and then we would request a resolution of concurrence for the proposed program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. Mr. Bandy. Thank you very much. This year's construction program for our, for again, for 2011-2012 uh, begins with SR-3482 Ferry Road, SR-1292 Brookshire No. 2, SR-2131 Britton's Cove, SR-1820 Cole Road, SR-2120 Anderson Cove, SR-1630 Snelson Cemetery, SR-1817 Moreldo Road, SR-2136 Riddle Road, SR-2176 Houston Road, and SR-3228 Fox Branch Road. And that is our priority list for this year, and then we have a backup list if we do exceed those. All right. The, uh, that's my eyes are wrong. Were some of our numbers different that he read off? Anybody else notice that? Doesn't matter. I'm talking. <laughs> Maybe my, either my ears or my eyes one were off. So we're adding 2.61 miles of unpaved roads to the system? These are currently unpaved roads right. on the system, and we're proposing to, if we can acquire right of way to build and uh, pave these roads. Right. So, so how many miles of unpaved, unpaved roads does that leave? We would still be at approximately, if we were able to acquire and build all of these, we would still be near 80 miles in Buncombe County of unpaved roads. And those, majority of those roads would be on the, what we have is right of way unavailable list, ones that have came up on previous year's programs and that we were unable to acquire the right of way on. Some of us may never see that then, might we? That's right. No, if, if we don't get, to, if someone doesn't choose to sign the right of way. Is, is there, are there any new <laughs> de developments with unpaved roads or is, every new development going to have paved roads i mean i don't know if you can do such a thing in our county well, most of the developments will have paved roads um, at this the newer developments have paved roads but there is the process of adding unpaved roads that are currently unpaved in a development there's some policies that we can do that could i just ask john is you can't you can't do a subdivision without paved roads can you in bone county you can, you can? there still is a way to do that oh okay and you still, you, if there's an unpaved road, um, you have to have right of way. They have, the owners have to agree for right of way, or add you can add it to the list. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it would be if they were able to add that to our system, sign the right of way, add it to our system, following under those policies. It would then go on our program, which we uh, prioritize these every four years several different things, house count, school bus routes, a lot of different things go into that score. And they would be put into that prioritization and then, and then they would land wherever their score puts them at that point. May I ask a question about the upkeep of unpaved roads compared to roads that are paved? I, I am aware of an unpaved road. It seems like there's always work being done on it. In a lot of instances, would it be less expensive for it to be paved? You would have the initial <laughs> upfront cost of building paving the road, but then the future maintenance, ongoing maintenance, would be cheaper of paving the road. Thank you. Yes, sir, Mr. Green. That you were talking about on, on road additions and new roads. If, if it's a new uh, subdivision or road that's built since 1975, in order for us to add it to the system, it will have to be paved. Now, there are some policies for old subdivisions that were developed prior to 1975, if they meet certain criteria, we can add those as unpaved roads, and then they will go into the priority mix. But they can do just an individual subdivision if they don't want to get on the state system. But we would not add those you to the system. We wouldn't be talking about them in your report. <laughs> okay, I got you. Good. And, and I have other, it's always good to see y'all once a year. Um, how did how'd y'all do last year with your, with your program you presented a year ago? I'll give you a list of roads that we are planning on paving that, that were typically what we would do on the previous year's program. Uh, we would build them 
that summer typically. And then look at paving those this year. Just that's a, sort of been our typical mode of operating with those and get a better product in the long run. And the roads we're looking at paving this year, uh, be three quarters of a mile of Phoenix Cove Road off Rims Creek, a quarter of a mile of Mustard Ground Hill, which is in Inca Candler area, almost a mile of Willow Cove Road in Sandy Mush, and a little over a half mile of Lone Pine Road in Alexandria area. In my head, it adds up about two and a half miles. That uh, right? yeah. Not quite? Yeah, give or take. Yeah, good deal. <laughs> But yeah. So that so that and that would have lined up with what y'all presented last year this time pretty much. Right. So. Close. Good. Yeah. 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 Good Some enough. of those we weren't able to get right away on. Uh, Mustard yeah. Ground, for example, was one of the roads that we did not get. It's a through road, so we were able to do part of that road. I see. So we did about half that particular road. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for these gentlemen? If not, I will start our public hearing. Uh, 443, any member of the public wish to be heard on this? Mr. Rice, if you'll give your name, where you're from, in uh, three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, it seems like a song and dance every year. Same people, new people. My, my question would be that uh, for years it's the list has got long, it's got short, it's got long, it's done all this. Under the general statute, we have a lot of money standing behind us that comes and presents this information. I've not really seen it that useful for the county. Used to the county, if I'm correct, used to maintain roads, but they don't anymore. Or No, we, we've never maintained roads to my knowledge, is that right? Well, they did some portion at some um, but my concern is this if uh, if a delegation could look at the way that this is being presented to the county commission and maybe save some taxpayer money by having to come every year and present this in a formal session that it could be presented in a different way uh, to the taxpayers uh, that they still get the same benefit uh, I think it'd be a useful way of saving some money and the delegation, uh, I think, could look at the laws and change them a little bit. Uh, I think it'd be a, a good way of doing it. I don't, I've just not seen it that much. I've seen a lot of politics in it, but not really saving of money. So yins might differ from me. I'm sure Mr. Stanley will. So thank you very much. All right. Uh, of course, one of our problems is this is the law. Most of us, all of us took an oath to uphold the Constitution of North Carolina. This is a law. It will be done, right, gentlemen? There's no question about that. I don't know what politics you're talking about. They hadn't paved my driveway in 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other public comment? Thank you. If not, we'll declare the public hearing closed at 445. Is there a motion to so uh, approve the resolution? Second. Been a motion by Commissioner Peterson, a second by Commissioner Bailey. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted 5 0. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for being here. Next, we'll have uh, Debbie Trumphy here to do a rezoning request, uh, Richard Kubuka, and she'll give us the information we need to look over this. Th Ms. Trumphy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Richard Kubica has applied to rezone two lots, tax lot number 9699317744 and 9699412317, located at 596 and 606 Old U.S. Highway 70 from R3 Residential to NS Neighborhood Service Districts. The two lots total 5.23 acres and are located on the south side of Old US 70, and they're west of the intersection of Cavalier Lane and Old US 70. The western lot is owned by Mr. Kubica, and it contains a commercial structure with an existing non-conforming business. If uh, this property were rezoned to NS, it would bring that non-conforming use into compliance. 
Mr. Kapika plans to purchase a portion of the eastern lot, which is owned by Bart Jones, to construct an additional building for his business. Um, that lot owned by Bart Jones contains the Carolina Ready Mix Concrete Company. Uh, rezoning to NS would make the concrete com company, which is an existing nonconforming use, less nonconforming. The surrounding area is comprised of residential uses and various commercial and industrial uses. The property is adjacent to neighborhood service uh, to the east of it. Commercial service is on the south of the property and there's residential zoning to the north and west of the subject property. The requested zoning is consistent with the Buncombe County Land Use Plan update as the update indicates that ENS is designed to allow for a mix of residential, commercial, business, and service uses in limited areas at key intersections leading to residential neighborhoods. The requested zoning would be consistent with the developing commercial area along this section of Old US 70, and the planning department has recommended approval of the request. The planning board held a public hearing on the application June 20th the board received one letter which had seven names that was against the rezoning. The letter cited noise, dust, and negative impact on the neighborhood as reasons that they were against the rezoning. Um, there was no public comment at the hearing itself. The planning board found that the requested zoning is consistent with the comprehensive land use plan, is reasonable and in the public interest as it would allow for a commercial business in an area that allows a wide variety of commercial uses. And the planning board unanimously recommends approval of the rezoning. All right. Thank you, Ms. Trumphy. Any questions for her before we do our public hearing? Could you flesh out a little bit in your um, rezoning analysis the part that talks about that's non consistent? You know that paragraph? The existing, um, this area was zoned um, December 1st of 09, and these were existing um, buildings uh, and uses, the business that Mr. Kubica has um, on one lot and then the concrete plant on the adjacent lot. Um, so those are the non-conform, when it says that, it's kind of the non-conforming uses you were, you were indicating. Yes, they're too, so. existing uh, and grandfathered uses. I, I got it. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, we'll begin the uh, public hearing on this uh, at 449. Uh, if you'll give your name, where you're from, and you have three minutes. Any public comment on this rezoning request? If there is none, I'll uh, declare the public hearing closed at 446. Any other comments or questions from the board? Is there a motion to um, approve the request? So move. Second. Been a motion by Vice Chair Stanley, a second by Commissioner Peterson. Is there any discussion? Would you just one more time tell me the, about the the ready mix? It's a it's a tell me what they do again. It's a concrete company. Okay. Um, it actually is on two parcels. One of the parcels was zoned uh, NS originally. The adjacent parcel, which actually just has um, a couple silos on it, was residential zoning when when um, we did the zoning in '09. So it's already there, and basically they're mixing concrete there is what they're yes. doing. It's not a concrete plant. So. No, okay. no, it's a ready mix company. Given some other controversy we had, I just wanted to get that one in the record. So, Okay, I'm good now. All right, any other questions or comments? If none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of granting the rezoning request from R3 to NS, say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carries 5-0. Um, next up we have the county manager report, but since we have the gentleman from Inca, do you mind with the board 
take him out of order. Okay. Wouldn't have him. Be fine. Okay. Well, let's take up the. Um, if that's all right, then we'll take up the solar initiative. And I think we have Mr. Tim Furley here. Uh, is that right, sir? That's correct. Is that close enough? <laughs> and you are with the Buncombe County Schools, I take it? Yes, I'm the facilities director for Buncombe County Schools. All right, Mr. Furley, thank you, and thank you for coming today. Well, thanks for your interest in this project. Um, Buncombe County Schools hasn't done this before, uh, and it's uh, part of kind of an overall strategy that the board has directed staff to find ways to save operating costs, to be more efficient. Uh, and this is one initiative of many that, uh, that we're looking at. Uh, I think we have a pretty good track record in the last five years of really focusing our capital funds towards projects that have very short-term paybacks for mm -hmm. energy. Those are the projects that we would uh, typically fund in our capital outlay process. We've used kind of five years as the threshold for a project that it makes sense to spend funds on to uh, recoup that money. This project is, um, has immediate payback. There is no out-of-pocket money in the uh, arrangement that the board will consider in their September board meeting. I needed to come to you because the rooftop lease that the board will consider is more than 10 years. A lease that is more than 10 years needs to be treated like sale of property. Mm -hmm. The lease that would be considered would be for 20 years. The uh, sale of property process involves um, advertisement, it involves an RFP uh, that goes to the public and uh, you receive responses. Uh, and it includes what we would do in the sale of property if, we, if property was declared surplus by the board. We'd bring it to you uh, and give the county commissioners an option to purchase it or, or take it uh, for the county's use. So in this way, in the lease being more than 10 years, that is the nature of the request that we have, that the county commissioner sees no uh, use for that rooftop uh, for a period of 20 years. Mm -hmm. So with I that, um, I'll describe as best I can, because it's fairly complicated. It's been scrutinized by our uh, board attorney, but the arrangement, uh, if the board of education chooses to enter it, is something like this. A developer foots the bill for installing solar rooftop equipment. It would, in this case, involve both PV, which is electric producing, and solar thermal, which is hot water. The PV power would be sold back to Progress Energy by the developer, so they would recoup funds from Progress Energy, not only for sale of the electricity, but uh, for what they call RECs, Renewable Energy Credits, which Progress Energy will pay because they need to demonstrate to the uh, Power Commission, the Utility Commission, that they have a certain percentage of energy in their grid that is produced by alternative methods. They don't have to produce it. If, the, if any producer in this room sells it back to them, as long as it's properly documented, they can use that as evidence uh, that they do have, they've met their, their goals that are, they're required to. So in terms of uh, the, the electricity, that electricity will not be directly used at Anka High School. The solar thermal output, however, would be. That solar thermal, that hot water, would be pumped right into our boilers, would be measured. They also receive, that developer for his investment receives a rec payment from uh, Progress Energy. And Buncombe County Schools will agree to purchase the solar power, the solar thermal power uh, that produced the hot water at a lower cost than what we would pay natural gas to produce that. So we've studied our use of 
solar hot water through the year and through uh, you know several years and we have a schedule of, of what we would be willing to pay them the amount of solar hot water that we would pay them on a month-by-month -month basis if they properly produce it the solar developer is required to maintain the system and in fact they're motivated to maintain the system because if they're not producing power guess what they're not getting paid by progress energy for the power or the racks and they're not getting paid by buncombe county schools for that solar thermal output so there's a good confidence that this system is going to be operating now the the buncombe county schools receives a lease payment for use of that rooftop basically and that's the sale of property why i'm here buncombe county schools would receive a lease payment in addition we would have predictable and lower than uh, the normal costs for this solar thermal output so those are the two immediate benefits that Buncombe County Schools would receive in addition to educational opportunities for the students because this monitoring system is available on the internet it's a requirement of our lease that our folks our teachers can bring into curriculum students can look at the output in real time and over time of the, uh, the, the solar equipment up there so that's a, a you know not a dollar uh, amount that you can put on that the real benefit of this would come after uh, year number six. Buncombe County Schools would have the option of purchasing this equipment uh, at fair market value. And at, after that time, Buncombe County Schools would receive all those benefits of electric power production, racks that have already been pre-negotiated Buncombe County Schools would basically take over that pre-negotiated contract and, uh, and receive the full benefits of the uh, solar thermal output. We expect the, uh, the warranted lifetime of these systems are 20 years. So that corresponds with the lease. However, the, you, you know, when your car is out of warranty, you don't throw it away, right? It still has a, a good operating life. We expect the, the system to easily last 30 years. It does have reduced output you know, every year. There's a half of 1% that you lose. So we understand what that is. That's where the real benefit would be for Buncombe County Schools is year 6 through 30. And we're right now evaluating proposals and uh, developing a schedule for return on investment, if you will. Uh, we're plugging in that cost. The maintenance costs are built into this. We can take over at year six the uh, defined maintenance contract, plug that into our cash flow so that the Board of Education can understand the, uh, the real benefits. In a nutshell, it, it's kind of complicated. I covered a lot of ground, but that's the nature of the arrangement it is not a direct solar purchase like you've seen those paybacks we've seen are just too long it's too big a upfront investment with a, a return that is from 10 to 20 years this is no out-of-pocket money did i say that already no yeah. out-of-pocket yeah, <laughs> i'm starters. glad to take uh, <laughs> take questions if uh if you have any so mr furley it basically they're getting a tax credit. Their tax credits are real good in North Carolina and federal that's, right now. That's correct. I didn't. So this so. company gets the benefit of that, puts all the money into it. You you agree to buy water at a lower rate, and Progress Energy gives them a benefit from putting money back in the grid. I mean, putting energy back in the grid that they can get credit for under other programs. That, that's really the key. I'm glad you brought that up because the cash flow that they receive from Progress Energy and from us for the solar thermal doesn't really make it work it's the tax credits that are federal state and there's a, a uh, an accelerated depreciation tax credit for any type of capital improvement that a business makes that that uh, sunsets but they can take advantage of that and it for makes the rest it a, of the year it's in effect that's right it's accelerated deal accelerated depreciation that's where that's what really makes the deal and interestingly, because of these incentives, the state of New Jersey, of all places, mm -hmm. is the number one solar exactly state right. in the United States, uh, not California, mm -hmm. uh, Arizona, Florida, some of these other ones. So 
I, I, this is great. I, I'm just so glad you're doing this. I, I think we can learn from you. This is something that we, we're working on, we're doing, and Mr. Creighton can tell us, and Brad Ellington can tell us about what we're doing on our side. But I just I salute you. Smart, smart program. Cost nothing. You get you get a benefit. It's a it's a triple win. So I will tell you that Enka High School was selected because we have a 28 year old mechanical system in there. It's going to eventually need to be replaced. So we're studying what we can do to make that school more efficient. When we put a new system in there, the new codes that are out there. Uh, that require a lot of fresh air in will actually, even with more efficient equipment, will increase the operating costs of that school. That was the initial motivation. How can we, you know, spend money to put new equipment in and update the school? Now we've got higher energy bills. So this is a way that that can offset that. We are also in the process of re-roofing those 28-year-old roofs, so we'll have real fresh roofs to accept. 30-year equipment. So that's something to consider when you're looking for a site. You don't want to put 30-year equipment on a 10-year-old roof. Doesn't make sense. Okay. That's any other questions, Mr. Furley? You working with a local firm? We've uh, encouraged in our RFP process, uh, <clears throat> which was open to the public, we had 22 responses. We had a pre-bid meeting. Some were local, some were regional. And uh, we got a variety of responses, and uh, we're evaluating them. We'll bring them to the board and, uh, and see great. what the board thinks, which, what makes sense for them. Great. You're going to save a lot of money? Pardon me? You're going to save a lot of money? Over that 30-year time, it's, uh, it, it's really good, good numbers, and we'd be glad to share those with you. Um, it's going to make a difference. Okay, any other questions? Good job. That's wonderful. Uh, is there a motion to accept so the um, Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Thank you again. Thanks for thinking out of the box and looking ahead. Um, next, we have the county manager's report. I see Mr. John Creighton making his way. And if you could mention our solar, I think we have a project over there. We may want to mention the We've got a project that's in the process of happening on this building here. On the other end, it's kind of same kind of concept where, okay, we're replacing the system. Now's the time to take a look and see what kind of improvements. And we're have, putting solar, solar panels on the end of uh, this building, Allport building, to help us with the heating and, and uh, the water. So, it, yeah, heating the water. So, so are we going to use the electricity in the building? Or yeah, it's more them? of the for the heating system, and it's a, it's a water-fed system, so we're Basically, you don't heat the, have to heat the water as much, especially on days like today. Uh, uses it in the jail, but it's for heating and cooling. So, Great. Yeah, so. How does it connect to the jail? That's the part I, I can I'm talking see. about the annex. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But our plans are as soon as, you know, obviously the, the jail across the street is 16 years old, so it's not going to be long before it's going to need a new roof. You figure every 20 years you can pretty much plan on it. I have a system over there that's 20 years old, and we're in the process of starting to look at that, that down the road, then we'll do those kind of upgrades over there. So. Right. Any prospect on the, our renovation to our old jail? Uh, it no, it's just that the that building, we looked at that, and just there wasn't, you know, that much of a payback. Uh, and it's a large building for the footprint that we had on the top. And it just, it really didn't come together for that size of building, that small area, and the use of that building. So. Well, thanks for looking. That's, that's, that's great. The county manager asked me tonight to talk a little bit about sprinkler systems, uh, what the county has in their buildings in light of the, the fire that we had last week in an office complex down on Biltmore Avenue. Um, the county has about 60 buildings. And... When you look at them, they range everything from 220,000 square feet to the courthouse down to about 480 square feet for a barn that we uh, house horses out in Swannanoa. So we have a, a large range of, of buildings. And for the most part, our buildings are under 10,000 square feet. When you look at branch libraries, uh, buildings that are associated with pools, community buildings, uh, ball field buildings where we do concession stands and stuff like that. 
a large part of those buildings are small buildings. But when you look at the larger buildings that we've got, being the administration building where the county manager is at 205 College Street, at 200 College Street that's across the street, the DSS building, 35 Woodfin Street that used to be the health department, those are large buildings. And over the last, really, last two or three years, we've moved to start sprinkling those buildings. When we did Pack Library uh, and finished those renovations last year, we sprinkled that building at that time. Uh, when we upgraded 35 Woodfin from the health department to move in taxes mm -hmm. and, and the register of deeds, we sprinkled that building. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're in the process of upgrading and doing the sprinkler system at DSS building. Mm -hmm. So when we did the admin building where the county manager is, and that was probably eight or nine years ago, we sprinkled that building at that time. So really in the, in the recent history, we have moved to, uh, to sprinkle the, our large buildings. Naturally, the detention facility is, is sprinkled, a sprinkled building. And I guess the, the real poster child here is the courthouse. I mean, right now we're in the process of building the life safety tower. And back in the early 90s, basically, uh, the chief jail inspector met with Dr. Rainey and said, you know, you're going to move the jailers, out of the jail out of the top of the courthouse and build a new detention facility. And that was in the early 90s. Then it, the big concern was it wasn't sprinkled, but they, basically we did not have two means of egress. We only had one real fire escape that went from top to bottom. It was a set of winders being winders are, uh, if you took a, a ribbon off of a roll and just held it up, it, goes, it spirals down. And that's the type of, of fire escape that we've got. It goes to the basement, but then it doesn't empty outside. You've got to go about 50 feet to wander <coughs> around in the garage to find your way out. So our, our main objective first is get those means of egress into that building from the top to the bottom. And that's the process that's going on now. We're cutting fire escapes in the top of the building and then we're building the exterior fire escapes up to the eighth floor and that's what's going on right now. In that process, in the upper floors uh, from 11 through 15 where the old jail is, we're sprinkling those. And any floor that we're doing renovations to right now being the third floor, courts just moved in and started uh, holding court on Monday, that third floor is sprinkled. So when we go through and remodel in those areas that we remodel building the structure up the life safety tower we're putting the means in to sprinkle that whole floor and and sprinkling that whole area and what our plans are is that we'll go through the second phase we'll build the courts addition the third phase we're going to come back and sprinkle the rest of the building so we'll have a, a building that was built over 80 years ago that will basically bring up to fire safety code and what happened there back in the late 90s about the time that we got the jail uh, detention cell facility completed, the, the building code changed for the high rise and said basically everything over 75 feet has to be sprinkled. Right now in the, in the, <coughs> in the, in the building code in North Carolina, office buildings don't really have to be sprinkled unless they get above that 75 foot level. So you see a lot of those buildings and it, you know, Obviously, we're concerned about the citizens, our employees that work at DSS and, and the health department, the old health department building, and things like that. And we get, we get a discount on our, on our insurance. So it just makes sense all the way around to bring these up to code and to go a step further and put in sprinkler systems, and that's what we've done. So we've made large gains in especially our larger facilities that house a lot of people and have a lot of public coming into them to bring those up to a code and to make sure that they're sprinkled. So I really feel good that, I mean, we've taken a lot of rights. Well, I should say you all have taken uh, the right steps here in, in the past by funding and allowing that to happen. So if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. But I, like I say, I think we've made big strides in that area. How many, how many builders we have that, that have stand pipes that uh, would be the water source for interior fire? Uh, not that many because they're not very large. I mean, we, have, we may have exterior stand pipes that, that, okay, you can do that, that FFC connection right there, FCC right. connection. But, uh, you know, they're basically one story. Now, those that have been built recently, 
that connection's right there for the fire department uh, to connect on and to fight the fire. How but often are those tested? None of those. I, th I think Greg does those on a yearly basis. I mean, fire marshal keeps up with those kind of things. Uh, they are, they're looked at on a yearly basis. So, you know, if there's not a, the building sprinkled, there's a way to connect a hose to it and fight, fight a fire. And, you know, and we've, you know, as, as all of you know, over the last 10, 15 years, we've done, all, you know, we've built a, a lot of facilities in, in the county. Are there any other questions? That's great. Thank you, Mr. Thank Craig. You, good job. Thank you. Dr. Green? That is good. Very good. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, I, want, I wanted to say something about secondary roads to start with. I hope we see them here every year for a lot of years to come. Me too. That is on the agenda for short session to give secondary roads to counties would be a, an unbelievable expense for us, but we will hear about that in short session. So I, for one, hope to see them back every year for a lot of years Don't to come. Do a bad job. I want to give you an update on CTS. We have made some progress since we were here last week. We've completed the asbestos assessment on the building. We're getting a second bid on the building to, to demolish it. Uh, Billy Clark is the attorney for the Mills Gap Association. And one of the things that did surprise us a little bit this week is we are having to get a consent from dem for demolition from CTS because they carry the promissory note for Mills Gap. We don't anticipate any problem with that and we have permits to get, but we've made a lot of good progress this week. Hope to get the second bid uh, late this week or early next week and, and be ready to, to um, move on with some permits and get started. Any questions about that? Good job. It's wonderful. Well done. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next order of business is our compassionate tax collector Gary Roberts will give us an annual tax settlement report in order to collect and thank you for your good work we're always among the highest in the state and probably in the country in tax collection rate which means everybody has to pay less so thank you well thank you mr. chairman and other commissioners um, I am here tonight to request action on uh, three items uh, first is to give you a tax settlement how we have done this last for this last year's collections also um, to get charged with the tax bills for 2011 we've got those ready and hopefully we'll be mailing them next week uh, once we get to charge <laughs> and then uh, the last action is we have some uncollectible taxes on an insolvent list I'd like to go over and have you to approve for us to uh, take them off the system um, I have a presentation now I'd like to uh, go through and show you our collection rates. I'm proud to tell you our collection this year was 98.67. You can see our regular levy, which is about 90% real estate. We had 98, 99%. And then motor vehicles, which is 12 monthly levies, beginning in July, those collections are somewhere around 98 to the last couple of months are about 70 to 75 percent but overall it's 93 percent collection which is very good in the world of tax collections so overall 98.67 right how do we compare to prior years I think it's important for you to look at that you can kind of see um, from 2004 to present kind of carried a consistent collection rate we did have some extremely good years in 2006 and 7 and I think we'll progress back to that level but I'm um, very pleased to see that we were ahead of last year and all of our years have been pretty consistent at a higher level our state average you can see 97 uh, 17 were a percent and a half above that this one I need to labor over a little bit with you this is probably the most important slide of all of them for me to discuss with you the total levy that you charged me with last year was 153 million of that, you can see the collections. The regular levy was 143 million. Vehicle collections were 7.6 million. And you can see the amount outstanding is $2 million. Of that, just to give you a quick breakdown on that, um, since June, we have collected 425,000 of that, leaving about a million six. Of the million six amount that is due, Roughly 200,000 is in bankruptcy. Bankruptcy has been very good this year with much less amounts. I think a lot of things are getting through bankruptcy, a lot more accounts in bankruptcy, but we're seeing a lot of you know, good collections in that area. Payment agreements, we still have about $125,000 that are coming in uh, on what's due. And then legal actions, uh, this is where we're doing forced collections. We've taken action on around 700,000. 
So we're still working closely on about a half a million dollars that's still out there. Prior year collections though, that we collected from some of the accounts that's still outstanding from last year and the years before, 2.8 million. So we had a very good in the area of dollars coming in. How do we compare to other counties of like size? I think it's always good to look at a slide like this. Uh, these are the totals of June 30th of this year. Durham County and New Hanover are just a little, little bit above us. Um, but, you know, I think in these you have to look at the economies. I, the thing I give great credit to you guys is the way you allow us to collect. I think we're very professional. We do try to be very compassionate to our citizens. Uh, no doubt our counties, the ones that do collect higher, can keep lower tax rates for the citizens and not carry a lot of baggage of uncollected taxes. This slide here shows uh, other jurisdictions we collect for, the city of Asheville, Black Mountain, Woodfin. And pleased to say that Woodfin's taxes this year are up about 6% from what we had last year. Great effort, effort there. Wow. To build more forest in Weaverville, we only collect the vehicles. They collect their own real estate. And you can see their collections are broken up just a little bit different. The fire districts, there's 23 districts, and we average those together, very consistent with last year, and the city schools. Let's see. So very good collection rates for all of those this year. I think it's important to look at highlights of um, things that you're trying to achieve and goals you want to set. Um, collection methods, no doubt, is probably the biggest thing for us. This year we've seen a lot of areas that has caused some, I guess for us, issues from like bankruptcies, uh, bank foreclosures, unemployment. There's a lot of issues that we've tried to work through. So coming up with collection methods to help citizens fit their budget to where they can pay us. We've had more pl payment plans than we've probably ever had over the last couple of years. So I think we've done a big effort there to help to get our collections in. Cross training um, in our budget this year, no doubt we cut some staff. I think cross training allowed us to do that in a very professional way that the citizens will get better service, will be more efficient. We have staff now that are, when you have specialized type duties that they do, we have more people knowing that. So it makes it our office much more professional and better run. Uh, improvement in the area of mobile homes. Mobile homes, you've probably heard me discuss in the past. This is something where citizens list those on an honor system. So there's a lot of them we may not get or get correctly or with the right owner, believe it or not. So we have had some staff going out in the field. We do create a property record card today on a mobile home as though we would a piece of real estate. Uh, we'll actually take a photo of it. We'll draw the uh, characteristics of the property and put a grade and condition level on the mobile home so we can better value it as we go forward. So it gives us better information when you guys are seeking information too for manufactured homes. Uh, new software, um, we have been working very well with our new software. It's coming along, I think, very well, not to say that it's not without problems. The new software is web-based and we're on an old mainframe, so you're definitely gonna find some issues there and getting your data cleaned up to uh, convert it over, but we found uh, a lot of good things in this process. Hopefully, um, we will bring that uh, on, I'm hoping maybe around May or June of 2012 is our goal. So we're pretty much on schedule there. This is a presentation that I have. Be glad to answer any questions on the tax settlement that you might have, but I request that you approve it. Just a quick question: What, what do y'all? What, what rate do you budget for in terms of collections? I know you're appropriately conservative, like. Yeah, I, I believe that to be ninety-eight twenty-five. I think is what we budget at, and it's a little bit yeah less than what we do, but um, in that, I, so that's I think it's conservative to help on balance and some other things that the county sure. manager does. Gary, let's say that a citizen was interested in a payment plan. Uh, that, how would they go about that? What, what would be, what steps would they take? Great question. Best thing to do is call our office and then we can look at their budget, what they can afford if they want to do something on a monthly basis or do they need to do something more <laughs> weekly. There's things that we can do with their employer to do, you know, a direct pay from their employer right to us where they don't really see the money, but the employer's helping them there. We can do like a draft account right out of their checking account where they don't have to write us a check. But I, I think the important thing is to have them to contact us. Let's make sure the tax bill's correct. 
um, if there's any other bills that might go along with it that are not all hatched together, and then come up with an appropriate payment plan that fits their budget. Great. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Is there a motion to approve the report and solve the insolvency yeah. report and charge Mr. Roberts with the order to collect? And if you'd like, I can go over the insolvents just quickly so you'll okay. have some yes, information sure. about that and you can do them all if, uh, together if you'd okay. like. Okay. Um, the insolvents is a term for uncollectible tax bills. That's what that is. I gave you two lists and the logic behind the two lists is because of how the state legislation is written. Motor vehicles, you can take out, take off the system bills that are uncollectible after a one-year period. On personal property, where I showed two levies, the motor vehicle and the regular levy, on the regular levy, you can take off personal property bills five years and older. So you have two different age limits of tax bills that I've presented to you. The motor vehicle bills are $12,409.79. And then the personal property bills, there's more of those. And some of those are cleaning up to get ready for our new software. Most of the bills, when you look on here, are from 2001. And I've put a lot of notes on there. I'll give you the total on that first. It's $281,739.99. Most of the reasons behind that is where they've gone through bankruptcy. Businesses have closed and moved the assets out of our area or the people have left the community with those assets. We're just not able to collect those bills. No real estate at all on this list. It's all personal property. Are there any questions about the insolvency report? <clears throat> no. All right. And uh, I think you covered the DMV insolvents also? Yes, sir. Okay, any other questions? Now is there a motion to submit the report insolvency and charge with the order to collect? Motion by Commissioner Peterson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Jones. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. The motion carries. 5-0, and thank you very much for working and doing it the right way and treating people decently when they can't pay their bills. Thank you. Thank you um, to the board for the support and uh, allowing us to do the job to the best of our abilities. And I want to thank the staff, too, for all their hard work. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Tammy Shook with the Community Child Protection Team Annual Report. Ms. Shook, good to see you, and thank you for coming to see us. Thank you, um, Chairman Gatton, Commissioners. I am the chair of the Beckham County Community Child Protection Team Child Fatality Review Team. This team was established in 1991 by General Statute 7B-1406, and part of that um, statute requires that we present an annual report to the commissioners. This team is comprised of 21 representatives from 17 child community service systems. We are charged with reviewing all fatalities in the county for the previous year, as well as reviewing current open child protective services cases to identify systems issues and offer suggestions for solutions. Since I came to you last August, we've reviewed a total of 15 fatalities for Buncombe County. Seven of those were due to prematurity or birth defects. One was for SIDS or sudden infant death syndrome. One, a cause of death could not be determined. One was suicide three motor vehicle accidents, and two due to illness, specifically cancer. Um, some of the issues that we identified in reviewing both the fatalities and cases were obviously a continued need for education for parents on safe sleeping for their children, co-sleeping. Um, the one undetermined case, um, the child was found on the bed on a pillow face down. And so um, that, that's still a cause for concern. I, I brought that last year and it continues to be an issue. The SIDS case, the child was also found um, propped on a pillow. So um, I think that is an ongoing issue for our community. Um, and a new issue that we've really spent a lot of time on this year is the issue of convicted sex offenders um, in our community and their release orders when they're released from prison. Um, interestingly enough, those release orders specify that they cannot um, 
have to be around other children, uh, cannot be around parks and things like that, but it does not restrict them from being around their own biological children. And um, we ran into this at DSS quite frequently where we get reports of um, children living in the home with a sex offender. Uh, which leads me to the second issue about when DSS substantiates sex abuse, but for whatever reason, um, the person is not convicted and placed on the sex offender uh, registry, um, there's no legal recourse around their access to children. Um, the other issue that came up was concern about bus stops. We had a, a fatality that we reviewed uh, around a young child that was hit crossing a, a road to get to a bus stop uh, because there was not a crosswalk there. And uh, ongoing community concern around child-on-child -child sexual acting out, where children are actually abusing other children sexually, and where do parents and caretakers go for help with that situation? Some of the strategies and activities that the team has used to address these and other issues. We sponsored a table at the Pause for Kids event in April in honor of Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, we handed out positive parenting information and uh, information on how to make a Child Protective <coughs> Services report. Um, I continue to sit on the advisory group for the uh, Partnership for Substance Free Students in Beckham County, and the focus of that group is underage drinking. Um, we did run a PSA or public service announcement around the danger of leaving children in cars unattended due to the heat. Uh, one of our team members, a very active member, Detective Mandy Buchanan with APD, attended a specific child death scene training. Um, I attended a national conference on citizen review panels and came back and provided that information to the team. We had a presentation from Beckham County Schools on bullying in schools. Uh, the one suicide, there was an element of bullying that had occurred, and of course that's been in the national media as well. And the school system has a really good program on that, and they came and educated our team about that. Um, I met as the chair with officials from the city to discuss the bus routes and the issues around the crosswalk. Um, and then on September 12th, which is upcoming, our team is sponsoring a community forum on child-on-child -child sexual abuse and acting out to try to pull together a community response so we can offer more referrals and resources for parents and caretakers in that situation. Um, finally, I just want to thank you for your time and your attention to this topic that isn't pleasant to talk about. Um, and to quote one of my favorite authors, Dr. Seuss, Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So thank you for caring. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you all have. Ms. Shook, I have one. Um, you said there's one suicide, and I think you mentioned there was an element of bullying yes. with that. Was that the primary reason someone committed suicide? And how old was the child? Um, it was a teenager. Um, the, the teenager was struggling with some gender identity issues, and I think the bullying was related to that. And I'm not sure that that was the, pr I'm not sure I can say that was the primary cause, but there was an element of that. Mm. Just hate to ever hear, all these are horrible, but somehow suicide, someone, a child taking his or her life. In the, in, in terms of the, the, the good work in the schools that you alluded to in terms of bullying, do they uh, address head-on issues of gender identity and all that? Because that's, that's where it's at with, sec with suicides. Right? Yes. Yes, they have a, a specific component about that. Um, I was really impressed with the presentation and what they're doing in the county school systems. We actually identified it as an issue. We're, we're going to take it on as a team and that's then great. had the school system come talk about what they're doing because we, want, we don't want to duplicate you know, efforts in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's wonderful. Thank Great. you. I hate to have a report, but I'm glad we're looking into each one and taking each one and, and seeing how we can avoid it. Thank you. Next order of business is designation of voting delegate to the North Carolina County Commission Annual Convention. Is there a uh, motion? Mr. Chairman, I nominate uh, Vice Chair Bill Stanley. Can we discuss it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Don't uh, get a no second. discussion. Don't call, the, a second. call the question. <laughs> <laughs> Motion by Commissioner Peterson, second by Commissioner Bailey to appoint Vice Chair Stanley to once again be our voting delegate to the Delegate uh, Emeritus. Of Delegate Emeritus mm -hmm. to the annual convention. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Thank you again. Congratulations. Vice Chair Very much. Stanley. <laughs> We're going to vote for 
Well, this I'm is commissioner from Macon County to the next president. Or so that's that's right. right. We have a that's mountain right. representative we working and up the system. Good one yeah. too. He sure will. Honey Beal. Board appointments. Historical Historic Resource Commission. Two two reappointments. Any nominations? Can I ask a quick question? Were we going to start getting like the attendance records and stuff for? I can certainly get them yeah. for you. Yeah. That'd be great. I just kind of want to formally ask for, I can't I guess kind of bat that around all the time. I'm sure these, both these folks have done great service, but I think that's just part of accountability on our part. Get, I do get that report from them, especially if it's a reappointment. I get them to tell me, do you have any problems? Are they attending? And they always give it to me. And I just, unless it's an issue, I don't pass it on, but I'll be happy to. Yeah, I'd like, I mean, I'd like to give kudos if it's 100%, you know, too. So I think, I think just passing on regardless, it's a good, it's a good thing. <laughs> Any nominations? And, and the, for these two reappointments, folks can just be reappointed once. Is that the idea? And so they're up for their second term. Yeah. Chair and I nominate Copy Wampler, Joseph Carvey. Second. Any other nominations? All those in favor for of those, uh, Mr. Wa uh, Campy Wampler and Joseph Carvey, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Thank you, and I, I think that is good. If you could just, just put it on there, whatever their attendance is, I agree. It's a wonderful thing to know. Tourism Development Authority, one for, reappointment. Yeah, for TDA, I would uh, nominate uh, Ron Moore, and I can attest that he, uh, he, is, he is there every time and is now the current chair of the TDA. So, which, which, what does he represent? A small, big, large? Large, he's at uh, uh, Grove Park. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, that. All right. Run. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I know him. Yeah. Good. Okay. Any other nominations for the uh, TDA seat? All those in favor of Mr. Moron uh, being nominated, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. He, Mr. The chairman of the TDA is reappointed to be <laughs> chairman of the TDA. Good move. All right. Uh, announcements. Uh, next meeting of our board will be August 16. 2011 at 4:30. Uh, members of our board will attend the Highway of Heroes ceremony on Friday, August 12th, at 10 a.m. at 20 Patton Cove Road in Swannanoa. And commissioner meetings can be seen on Charter Cable 2 or live during the meeting. Live online. That's relatively new, I believe. When did we start doing that? About three or four meetings ago. Okay. Live online during the meeting or on demand anytime at buncombecounty.org. Uh, Mr. Chairman, after public comment, will we have a public, I mean, a, a closed session? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, we do have uh, three items for closed session pursuant to General Statute 143, 318, and 11A3, uh, two attorney-client matters uh, to discuss with the board, and uh, under subsection 4, one economic development matter, we anticipate no action other than direction from the board. All right, then we're up for public comment. Uh, we will take three minutes, and if you'll give your name and where you live. Uh, any public comment tonight? Lady Rick, yes, ma'am. Waiting patiently. Hi, my name is Linda Southard. I'm from Candler. And um, I have a comment about the um, gentleman's presentation from Enca Schools. Is that okay to talk about that now, even though it's been passed? Yes, ma'am. Um, any comments you wish to have? It seems kind of silly because it's already been passed. But um, the comment I have is that you had mentioned how the tax credits and um, the depreciation um, tables uh, for the equipment made this project or made made it appropriate for this company or worthwhile for the company to put, to install this when anca after six years goes and buys this for market value that's not going i mean are they i guess my question is i'm concerned that they're going to be paying a high price you know they don't have um, access to those credits i guess and is there going to be another review before the board looking at the numbers and the payback? What if the system doesn't produce the amount of energy they thought it was, it would do? I guess my question is, has anybody thought through that and how is that structured? We could probably get that answer for you. I, I'll, I'll just go off book here uh, in fear and trembling, but the establishment where I work have uh, incurred a similar uh, 
solar system with the same type of purchase uh, agreement and we have ours monitored monthly to see make make sure it's functioning so there is that on ongoing accountability of the functionality and when it comes time for us to decide if we want to buy it or not there is a, a, a table that it, it, it will, would cost a lot less at the time should we decide and that's, a, that's an option they don't have to but it's not fair market value here it's it's after the use of after five years so and I'm is, assuming will there be another another presentation or is that a done deal that in that particular agreement that at six years the ENCA will purchase it I, I don't think they have to come with us with specific purchases but I, I will if you'll leave your name and okay. address I'll have the chairman of the uh, of the school board or representative of the superintendent call you and give you the details we're really not in that one but the concept is it's a lot lower price when they if and when they choose to buy it they don't have to ever buy it if it's okay a that deal. I mean that was part of my thing did could did they have the option to yeah, choose it is an it? option it's not like etched yeah. in stone that as of that when they sign that contract that at six years they will have to buy it oh no ma'am I, I, I am familiar with those kind of contracts and it is an option Okay. And I'm sure this one is, but I'd like you to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So if you'll leave your name and address, I'll have I'll have them send um, information and maybe the contract to you. Great, thank you. Thank you. Good questions. Uh, any other public comment tonight? Ms. Landis. I am Reverend Lisa Landis, and you can find me Glow Lady, G L O L A D Y, on the internet. If everybody would like to take out a dollar bill or a coin, you will read on that. It says, In God We Trust. And we in the United States have a First Amendment which says that we can practice any religion that we want. And a lot of us question and damn others because of that God that we choose to take, not understanding that. God in uh, good orderly direct direction is how we should be treating the dollar and not the love of money is the root of all evil. For when people look at money, um, things are done to other people and they don't take their actions into consideration. When I was young, my mom said that um, if I was rich or if I was so, uh, so smart, why wasn't I rich? And I've found that wealth is not monetary. When I invented glow-in-the-dark clothing and did fashion shows in New York, I had to give up that because I survived an 18-year abusive marriage, and I said enough. And then I went into um, a, a, a public safety issue, and, and again, I was denied my business. And then I started a produce stand before I came here in Transylvania County, and Bubba, who had a 36-page rap sheet, um, I had to leave that business and I focused on URTV where that was my job and that was my business and I still have not received a good enough reason as to why my voice and our voice was shut down. If we the people are so important to this community, then I hope that you look under WNC, Community Media Center on YouTube and you tell me which one of those shows was garbage. Because I don't care if it was public information, if it, if it was religion, it was still our First Amendment right. Now the thing that all those people had in common is that they all took away my job and destroyed my business. The one thing that they do not have in common is that the county commissioners take an oath to uphold the law. Now, when I, re when I requested the budget, the BCTV budget, this is the only thing that was given to me, a four line. If I would have submitted something on the order of as a business, I would have been laughed out. Now, I'm tired of playing the games that you guys are playing. Either you're commissioners and you are going to uphold the law, and you're going to tell me why URTV was closed down, why you're still crediting only five jobs lost with this new budget when there were at least five jobs lost at URTV. That makes ten. Now, if we cannot add five and five and make ten, then how can we make budgets work. If we find $7 million out of a black hole, then why were we denied the funding for URTV? If URTV had $16,000, why did URTV only get fourteen? dollars All right. Thank you, ma'am. 
you are entitled to any information about the budget and we will get you information on the BCTV if they require that. And if there's additional information, you're entitled to that. That's public money. Any other public comment? Yes, sir. Chris, how are you doing? I have a question. I have a question. You'll give your name where you're from, please. Oh, Chris Oaks, Swan North. The question I got is um, where I live at, um, my trash is um, by Waste Pro, which is county. But there's people that's dumped, my, that dumped their trash beside mine mm. was not been picked up. Mm. I've already contacted uh, Mr. Rick Ramsey, a great guy. But I'm wondering, what do I need to get from here to get this uh, solved? Mm. Bob Thank you, Mr. <laughs> yes, sir. No, Mr. Dr. Byrne. <clears throat> Dr. Milton Bird, Buncan County resident. Good evening. Um, in the past few weeks, I have been to the city of Asheville repeatedly on the issue of the request for proposal for the new media. Um, approach that the city of Asheville has put out for request. I do want the commission to realize that public participation in that RFP represented only 10 percent. Um, my reason for bringing this up is really because of what I had spoke with them about last time. Making decisions that are bureaucratically sound yet going in the wrong direction requires strong leadership and I know what kind of challenge you guys have up there and this issue of URTV this public access issue has really raised the questions of abilities of how trusting and how effective we are in communicating with the people even when you're in disagreement one of my favorite quotes of Robert Parrish former mayor past um, we can agree to disagree agreeably there is a real challenge of responsibility to talk with the people, even in difficult issues and conflict. I really want to put across to you that in these times that are becoming economically more and more challenging, that you bend over backwards to really establish communication with the people. Because if you look across the state, and I've been doing some homework on this, we're seeing the food assistance demands across the state skyrocket. I've talked with health service directors across the state. We're seeing issues of fracturing socially that represent so much difficulty at the foundation level of society in our communities that we're having discord and we're seeing it in many ways, such as this kind of issue. I want you to understand that a healing is needed before we get into deeper waters with the issues of changing economy where we have to um, amputate, as I've heard before. I really want to challenge you to reach out again to us of the public and work with us in our communications, especially when we have disagreements, because that's when we need you the most. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bird. Any other public comment tonight? Mr. Rice? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Jerry Rice from Cantor. Seems like a lot of Cantor folks comes out and talks. We poor people out there. Uh, have a great concern on the MLS listing, uh, the housing market. Uh, I've uh, certainly been engaged in some of that here recently, and I have never seen the like of people selling their property what I'd call dirt cheap but nobody to buy it. I'm concerned about uh, the same thing that the doctor's concerned about, and that is poor people. That's what we all ought to be concerned about. But the bigger concern is, is I think this Board of Commissioners has the power and the duty and the responsibility to do something here that you have and can do and you've done it in the past, but not near in the past. And that is a tax reduction for the citizens of Buncombe County. If the housing market is so bad that the real estate people are making deals 
that honest to goodness, I have never seen nothing like. There's a big problem here that's being hid from the public and the county commissioners are hiding it from them. Now that's my, my big beef here. Now, Gary Roberts is a man of his word. He's very nice. He's been nice and he's, he's the best person I've ever seen to work with people. And I give him credit for that. But if, if I want to say something further, I'd like to say to the county commissioners, you ought to be just as nice as Mr. Roberts and do a very good tax reduction and a reevaluation of property because I'll tell you what I've run into just this week. Not just this week, but I told you when you said you wasn't going to reevaluate property until eight years. What I've run into on a daily basis and a weekly basis, the tax office is running the mileage on the cars like crazy, reevaluating property on a daily basis. This is not something they used to do as much as they're doing it right now. And what my concern is, is the property uh, valuation tax is going up, 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 and the poor people, like the doctor is talking about, we are living in poverty. We are living in the slums, if you want to hear the words, it makes it ring. And I don't believe we're getting to the ears of the commissioners to lower the tax rate. This is killing our community. Yens can build buildings, Yens can spend and spend and spend, and there seem to be no hole on spending. You can't get the newspapers around here to do anything, to print it. So I'd like for you all as commissioners to do something. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Rice. Any other public comment tonight? Move we go into closed session. Second that motion. Motion by Commissioner Bailey to go in closed session. Second by Commissioner Peterson. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. We will go into closed session and do not expect any action afterwards. Is that right? Okay. Thank you.